Hi, welcome to the Try Hard Podcast. This is episode 20 with chiptune artist Superfetch. prepare a discussion but i feel like i even though this is the first time we're meeting Mm -hmm. like i feel like i know you pretty well so i didn't really i just feel like you really have like a story to tell yeah and i was gonna make some notes and i was gonna try to like uh you know look at some stories and uh, you know articles news articles and and, and source some stuff and kind of just like drop a bunch of info on you but i think you know everything i already know (laughs) so i don't think so well, I mean, if you're reading the news, you know, you're seeing that we're we're a mess, man. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I was actually looking at the hospitalization numbers and they're, they're not as bad as they were when we were having uh, a, a, they, they were worried about a shortage of beds and supplies, oh, shit. but they are going up. Uh, and it, it's 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 kind of it, it kind of was at its lowest. Uh, it looked like in September and now it's going back up. It's still not at that danger level, it looks like. But at the same time, too, I'm also reading that they're not even putting those numbers out. Wow. Uh, there is like <clears throat> there's some independent people, uh, uh, data analysts who are doing accurate numbers or doing their best to. Um, There's certain schools and certain hospitals that aren't reporting their numbers. uh, And we're finding that out from people on Twitter. There's one uh, scientist, her name's, I think her name's Rebecca Jones, uh, but she was the scientist uh, who was fired by Ron DeSantis because uh, they needed to be at uh, an 11% infection rate in order to open up and they were at about 18. Oh, gosh, how, how long ago was this? It's, it was March, April, maybe May, I think it might have happened. I can't remember. But she got fired because she didn't want to falsify data. And um, that's it. You know, nobody's been held accountable for it. But she's been doing a really good job. She has a website up. Uh, and, and she's on Twitter, of course. And, and I think she's even working with other groups that are trying to get the correct numbers out. Uh, I think last I read, Tallahassee is trying to correct whatever they were kind of off about and just trying to act like nothing happened. But, you know, it's it's Jesus. Still scary. Yeah. Uh, but uh, w- w- were you going to do a thing? Yeah. OK, you got it. Yeah. Let's um, uh, I feel like we're going to easily get on tangents here. You and I both <laughs> probably <laughs> I, yeah. we could, we, I'd like to talk about music at some point. I know, too. True. Yeah, yeah. And then there's an election that's happening tomorrow. <laughs> So this is pretty exciting because this is super exciting. Yeah, it's like a time capsule. You yeah, listen to it in a couple days, and who knows? What's and this gonna is happen. gonna this Tuesday tomorrow. I have Shubzilla and Bill Beats's episode coming out, and then so your episode is coming out the following week. So maybe we'll know who won by then. So it'll be like an interesting look. I think back. we're gonna know who won by like eight o'clock tomorrow. You think then. so? 
I, I my gut tells me that this that everybody who didn't vote voted right uh i think we're gonna win this one oh my god I, 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 I do um and then of course you know i'm not really super happy about having to vote for who i voted for but at the same time could you imagine just like three weeks of not thinking about the fucking anything government related like maybe you know maybe worrying about your own stuff for a change i don't know you That'd know be amazing like, yeah uh hopefully everybody can feel that way yeah you know? even just like a little break you know like just like a. all right you know we should stay focused but maybe it'd be cool to like just take a week off from like the constant thing that's been going on for the four years i hope that if they i mean i think they're gonna win i, I pretty yeah, much 100%, i think so too. Hopefully. i'm yeah. almost certain I, I hope one of the first things they talk about is just going dark for a couple of days. You yeah, know? just like do it. shutting the fuck up. And, yeah, and then shit, nothing happens. You know, <laughs> that'd nothing be great. Happens. Yeah, okay. that'd be so cool. Uh, but okay, yeah, sorry, we keep All trying right. to get sidetracked. All right, here we go. Uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, my name's Gary. Uh, I've been playing in bands since I was like fifteen. Uh, punk bands mostly um i i moved to gainesville when i was 18 uh and it was a big scene town there was a lot of bands i actually moved to gainesville and saw that records that i had owned as a kid i never like read the back of them or like any liner notes or like what was going on and then i moved there and i saw that that those bands lived there uh and just didn't even know and <laughs> so i kind of just like loved it and i thrived in it and just for years was always out at a show and just drinking and partying every night and playing in bands. And over the years I played in all sorts of bands, uh, uh, punk, pop punk mostly, but I played in uh, a couple grindcore bands. I played in some ska bands. Um, there was a time when I was in like five or six bands at one time. Um, nothing ever really took off too big. I had a couple cool things that were going, but touring is always hard when you're younger too. And, um, don't have a lot of money or rich parents, you know, but I still had the drive. And, and when I got into my thirties and I hit around the age of 30, I kind of stepped back from the scene and I chilled out on the drinking and I focused more on music and, uh, I kind of stopped relying on my town, I guess, um, cause my town has the fest here. You've probably heard of it every yeah. October. We have the fest. Uh, I've been a part of it. It's wonderful. It's awesome. It's a, it's a, it's a really kick-ass music community here. Um, <clears throat> but I kind of wanted to like do my own thing, you know, like it, not rely on it or, or, or rely on fest or rely on my town to kind of get me the stuff. So, uh, my grind band went around, did a lot of touring. We toured about two, three weeks a year, which isn't much, but I got to see more of the U S with them than I did with anyone else. Um, and yeah, I just kind of picked up a Game Boy about the age of 30, Yeah, I think. Started doing emulator stuff, and um, I, I learned on an emulator, um, and it took about probably about five years of really just screwing with it every day, watching videos, watching people do it online, and kind of in the back of my mind knowing that I wanted to do Superfetch, and uh, had super fetch kind of on the back burner had like an ep recorded had like most of my songs written but never just went and did it right and then COVID happened uh. and, then, and and then i should add like in between there and why kind of i think we're what we're probably going to get into is about that same time at age 30 i went and i what i did was i volunteered for americorps um now i didn't have any college degree i had some college i actually owed money i was in kind of trouble with my student debt oh no and um <clears throat> i did americorps for two years and it kind of cleared that up um it didn't pay it off but i got about 11 grand to put towards it nice and then it brought it out of default and i was able to go back to school for a little bit and um that also jumped me into every position that i had working for the state uh, for about the next six years. Um, so I did two years of AmeriCorps. I did a year of educational outreach for the University of Florida. Uh, and that was because my AmeriCorps focused on prescribed fire and uh, invasive plant removal, which is a big issue here in our, well, in all forests, but here in Florida, we got some uh, big ecological problems with that. So I was teaching kids about bad plants in their Aww. yard. So hopefully they could go home and say, mom, that's bad, throw it out. Uh, <laughs> 
and that was the idea. I did that for a year, did a park ranger position for a year, did a park ranger position in Miami Dade for a year. And then I did two years with the Florida Forest Service, which has taken me right up into COVID land. And my last year of that was my first and only year of my whole life of being a career service employee. Um, that meant uh, I got all the benefits, the retirement. Okay. I went through my year probation. Um, I could have been in to win it. I could have been there my whole life at that point. I think it was like, once you make it that year, you're, you got all these protections and stuff. They don't pay you much, but you get a lot of cool stuff. And that's kind of what saved me. <clears throat> because when COVID happened, uh, I have uh, I have an autoimmune disease. It's in my lungs. And uh, about every spring, I get this weird inflammation and I need to take immunosuppressant steroids. Oh, crap. And the same time COVID started, my symptoms picked up. Uh, I could not get um, my medicine because COVID. Uh, they, I guess they found out early on that prednisone and steroids, uh, it makes it worse. And my symptoms are very similar to COVID symptoms. So about early March, I was wearing a mask and, and I work at the Florida Forest Service. So everyone's kind of a redneck there. Um, so they just see me walking in with a mask and already I'm getting made fun of. And it's like, it's not because of what you see on the news. It's because right. of me, like right. I can't breathe. I, I have to do this. And um, so I was visibly getting sick because of this. And then once the the, the folks who I work with, who let's just say lean more towards the, this is a hoax thing. Yeah. Um, once they started realizing that this is real, uh, the news says, you know, everyone's, everyone, all their kids are coming home from school now. Like yeah. it, it's, it, it hit probably about March 15th. Actually, I think that's exactly when it happened. They started uh, scrubbing down the office with bleach and wipes and stuff. And that's the stuff that triggers my symptoms. No. Yeah. So all this. So I started getting sicker and, and uh, I, I started going to the doctor. I started getting doctor's notes. Long story short. Sorry. I, I got a bunch of doctor's notes. It was all documented and I had to resign. Um, I, I just couldn't be there anymore. It didn't seem like they were taking precautions. I didn't feel safe, but I was also getting sicker, but I couldn't fix that. And in my sick time and my uh, leave was all getting used up. So I just wrote a letter of resignation and I cited in the letter, my medical reasons. And I think that saved me. And when I got out, uh, I went about two months until a friend told me you should apply for unemployment. Um, I wasn't even going to try. I, in my mind, I had quit, you know, Yeah. but I guess I didn't, I didn't know that I didn't. So a friend told me that even if I don't get approved for the unemployment, I'd get COVID relief. Um, <clears throat> so I went and tried it and psh, I got it. Uh, yeah. So I wound up making ends meet up until now, even. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's even without the extra because I'm actually getting unemployment. So, yeah. And that's where I am now. And I had a lot of time at home. I haven't left my house. Uh, and I've just been building a studio and renovating the house that I live in. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Something that I thought was so interesting was when we first met over like Twitter, I came up through the chiptune scene you know i was like this 27 25 year old dude and like i was like trying to like navigate my way with like the chiptune and stuff and i um, did like open mics and like i kind of built up to the very little thing i have right now and so when i meet people uh who are like new to chiptune i like i always like assume they're like me and like, so, you know, I'll get like some 18 year old kids who are, you know, just starting out in chiptune. I'm like, oh, why don't you play the Boston 8-bit thing? It'll be cool to like get you a stage and stuff like that. And so when I, when I met you for the first time, I didn't, I, I didn't really know who you were very much, but you had said that you were like new to chiptune. So I was like, I'm thinking it from like my end. So I'm like, oh, he's probably just new to this thing. And I was like, oh, you should come out to Boston. I'll get you a stage. It'll be great. Da, da, da. And you're like, oh, no. I'm like, I already been there, man. Like I've done all this stuff. <laughs> like, I was like, who is this dude? So <laughs> it was so cool to hear about like all your music uh, experience. Cause you, you, de it definitely sounds like you've been, you've been through it. Uh, is, yeah. Is yeah. No, I yeah. think I have. I was saying to my wife today um, that, you know, like in your twenties and stuff, especially like in punk, like you would never like refer to yourself as like a musician. You wouldn't be like, 
uh, yeah, I'm a musician. Right. Uh, you, you'd be like, I just fucking, pfft, I just, right. Pfft. Now I'm a fucking musician. It ruined my life. It fucking <laughs> took all my money. It, it, it like, I lost jobs for going on no. tours, like all sorts of shit happened. Like crazy shit, band fights, breakups in the middle of tours, uh, wild stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, that's why I'm very excited about this now too, is because it's just me. Yeah. And uh, there's no band. I can just get into a car and, and friggin' go and play anywhere. Um, and that's cool. But yeah, no, I mean, I think I, I, I did a lot of crap. I mean, I know a lot of people my age and younger than me that have done more. And um, but at the same time, too, man, I feel like I could die happy. You know, I mean, I want to get out on a tour with my Game Boy. That's my new goal now. But um, yeah, no, uh, I definitely did a lot of cool crap. What, like, OK, well, one thing that kind of like drew me to uh, like the crowd of like chiptune folks that I, I kind of like to affiliate with on Twitter. And I feel like ever since I, I started coming out and talking to folks, too, like I've like I've dropped a lot of folks that I follow on Twitter because if it turned out they were they were friggin jerks, you know, oh, really? like, well, you know, I'm not going to say any names uh, just just because I don't want to get involved in any drama. But like I was fans of a lot of folks. And then when I started you know, paying more attention to lesser known artists, I started seeing, you know, I'm sure you recognize a, a couple months ago that there was like a pretty wide call in the community for uh, more diversification of like set lineups yes. and stuff like yes. that. Yeah. And um, th that's kind of like right around the time when I started wanting to put my music out because I started seeing people like uh, just kind of speaking truth to the powers that be and right. the powers that be, uh, I was following them because I was fans of those folks. And the kids that were talking shit were like, those were my heroes. And those were people who like, I'd kind of experienced that same thing like 10 years ago uh, in the punk scene. The point is, is uh, the band that I think I have the best stories of was a, a, a diverse cast of members. Let's just say a, a, everybody kind of came from different walks of life. It, it wasn't all white dudes uh, a, a, and you know, all genders uh, and, yeah, uh, a cool fucking band. My singer uh, is non-binary and it was like the kind of like the first person that I had met who ha like had their life like that, you know, where I had to like watch my pronouns and stuff. But uh, after touring in that band for like six years, like that's the funnest, best band I'd ever been in. Wow. Uh, and I'd been in bands with, you know, awesome bands. I'd been, I'd probably been in better bands, but you know, like, it's it's just kind of like that thing about like diversifying s shows and sets and, and stuff like that. Like now I look at a band and if I see a band photo and it's just like a bunch of white dudes with like beards and like, like Oh no, 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 and I'm just no. like, they all look like they like, like IPAs and stuff. And oh, like, no. you know, and it's like, I'm just so turned off like immediately. <laughs> and I'm like, this band sucks. Like I don't oh, even need to like, no. I don't even want to do that, you know, but, but I guess like, that's where the fun came in. That's that's yeah. where all the crazy tour stories came from. The grind band. One of the craziest feelings, and I and I I kind of tell this story is that uh, I, I had driven from Florida, and our first show was in Richmond, Virginia. So we took the drive straight from Gainesville to Richmond. That was our first show, and then the next night we were going to Providence to pick up the band we were touring with. That's a big uh, drive, damn huge this is the weirdest tour i'd ever been on and it's because we let our singer and their friend the singer the guitar player of the other band book it and 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 this is where i met my current drummer in grindcore now because he was in the band that we ended up touring with but we were both like older dudes he he was in his 40s i was 36 37 and we kind of like as soon as we met we were like we're uncomfortable because we didn't book this and we didn't know who like where we were going next or what we were doing and we also kind of i was driving my van because i was carrying equipment and our drummer but he wasn't driving his vehicle so like we were all sort of uncomfortable about it and it was all really long drives um, so yeah, we did uh, Richmond, then we went to Providence, and then we we drove through New York on the way to Providence. Point is, is we went all the way to Michigan. Uh, we went kind of up to the, we went to like the Great Lakes. Like I got the, if fun story, if you go to Cleveland and you're in a band and you're on tour and you're playing some dingy little club down the road and there's a Facebook event or a flyer that shows your band, go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, they'll let you in for free. 
Really? I didn't know that. I did not know that. And my drummer who I was with had been there before and he was like, yeah, dude, we just go up there. And I was like, really? That's kind of BS. Whoa. And it's like $40 to get in. And then you go up there and yeah, he just pulled out his phone, showed him the Facebook event. He's like, there's our band. We're playing it right up the road. Holy like I was shit. like, go on in. So take a trip to Cleveland. Um, it, uh, but there's one of the great lakes there that it's yeah. on. It smells like um, cat pee. And there's <laughs> dead fish about five feet along the line. I guess it was on fire like two years before to oh, that God. too. So it's kind of a smelly place, but um, that was really cool. But I remember being up there and we just played, the, we played the venue. Uh, I think I don't really drink on tour anymore, but I drank that night. So the next day I was really hung over, oh, no. but I remember getting in the car at the van and, and pulling up my phone and doing the GPS to go to the next place, which I can't even remember. My geography screwed, but I remember looking at the map and I remember thinking, like, how far am I from home? I'm just going to plug in Gainesville and see how yeah. much of a drive. And that is the scariest and also the coolest thing you'll ever do on tours when you're like, I drove here. How far is it? And you're like, I'm like four and a half <laughs> days from home. I'm farther than I've ever been in a car. Oh and this car has got to make it back, too. Oh, no. Yeah, it was a it was a little minivan too. It was one of those stow and go seat ones, and like it was like nice, but it wasn't a tour vehicle. So yeah, I kind of trashed it on Holy the way back shit. there, but oh it was fun, you know, stuff like that, you yeah. know, checking out all the like my singer used to go to all the vegan donut shops. That was their 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 like so much so that like halfway through like most tours i'm just like so tired of vegan donut shops like i just like <laughs> i go somewhere else and i get like a cheese steak i like like y'all have fun but, but like things like that also stopping at the record stores which is sad because i can never buy anything because i always yeah. had to like worry about the money stuff like that oh i got a crazy story i just thought of one so we're playing this house in philly we played a speakeasy basically a house that sells beer illegally and <laughs> And it was ran by a Jamaican dude and uh, it had a little door that like you walk down a little stoop and you knock on the door and the thing opens up and like they no, look at you no. and they're like, all right, yeah, come on in. No and then way. like you go in. And so uh, we go in and I'm like, this is the place that you play. And it's like, it's a bar kind of in a basement of a house. And it's one of those like, well, you've been to a city because you're up in New England. So you've seen those old like buildings that are sort of all connected, like in Boston, kind you know, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're kind of expensive there. Uh, but this one, it was like one of those, like a three story, had a basement and he owned the whole thing. Oh, wow. And the basement was a bar and the kids that booked it were like punks. They were like crust, crust, crust punks, like, like some of the dirty, uh, cool kids, you know, but it was like, this is like a real street punk kind of atmosphere yeah. for what we were doing. And, uh, but I went in there and, um, you know, it, it so the the show was on the first floor, which was like a wedding reception room. So I guess what the dude did is, I guess for the community, he would just hold events there in this Whoa. house that he owned. So the punks that live down the road are like, hey, can we just have shows here? And he's like, sure thing. So then we're on the first floor and um, that's where the show is. And the other weird thing is he's smoking inside. It's like, it's, it's like 2016, 2017 or something. You know, it was 2015, 2016. Yeah. And they're smoking inside. So that was the other that part that sucked is the whole place was like, oh, like you couldn't even walk in there. It was so bad. Um, and that's not even the crazy tour story. The crazy tour story is that we're in Philly and uh, there's this thing in Philly I don't know if it's real. My singer said it was, but it's called the Philly bump. And what it is, is that there's no room to park. So everybody's got a parallel park. So when you get your spot, you get your spot. But I guess what people do there is they kind of just like push your car a little really? bit in their car to get their car in. And I didn't know that. Um, but I'm only explaining that I got, uh, this isn't when I got hit with that. Cause I sleep in the van. That's the, that's the story is that I'm the van guy. I don't go and hang out with the kids. I sleep in the van. Also the gears in the van and we're in Philly. Right. You know, I was just like, I'm just going to, I'm going to chill in here. It's comfy. I right. watch anime. I'm good. Right. And uh, I got in there. I covered up all the windows. So, you know, you're with all these street punk kids. They all hate cops and you're in a weird neighborhood. And <clears throat> so the next morning I wake up, I get a good night's sleep. I can see the sun's come up. My windows are all covered and I can see sirens and I'm like, like, like lights. And I'm like, what the heck's going on? And I, uh, <clears throat> I, I like peek out the side and I see cops all around my van, not like 
it's like I said, everyone's tightly packed. So it's like, I can't get out anyway, but the whole road is literally blocked by like five or six cop cars and they have their lights on and I'm in my vehicle. And even though like, I'm kind of like, I'm a, I'm, I'm a punk and I'm on a tour and stuff like that, like just kind of like older dude mentality just kind of took over. And I was just like, what the hell's going on? And I just kind of <laughs> got up with no shirt on moved the towel from the window and opened my car door and stuck my head out. And I go, is everything okay here? (laughs) And they were kind of just sitting there like showing each other like pictures on their phones, not really doing anything. I don't know why they were blocking the road or why this was even happening, but I'm like, is everything all right? And they all like like four cops (laughs) and like four cop cars all talking to each other. Look at me and go, are you, are you all right? Oh no. What are you doing? what are you doing? Why are you in the, why are you in this van asleep? And I'm like, Oh, Oh yeah. Uh, I'm in a band. And then I just kind of like ripped all the things down and I was like, there's guitars and stuff. You see it all. And they're like, Oh, okay. And I'm like, yeah, I just didn't, I couldn't sleep inside the house. I had to be with all this stuff I'm just scared <laughs> to death. And then they're like, okay, that's cool. And then they left, but I'm just like, what happened and i go inside and i tell like i said there's all these crusty punk kids and i'm like guys my car was just surrounded by like five cop cars and there were all these cops and they caught me sleeping in my car and all these kids got so scared and they're like where where where, what happened i think i was like no it's cool i just said i'm in a band it's cool and then they're like what it's not cool and i'm like i mean i I mean it, it, it was for me but you know but that's just a weird story of some dumb stuff that happened weird things like that man my, my, my drummer at the time, too, used to get so mad at me because we'd always go. He was a very angry dude. Oh, really? uh, and, and we'd always go out and like we'd go to restaurants or something and people walk up and we look like a bunch of goofballs. It's probably me in a Hawaiian shirt and a guy in a death metal T-shirt. <laughs> and people will walk up and go, well, you guys look weird. What are you guys doing? And go, oh, we're in a band. I said, Why do you always do that? You always start conversations with everybody. Why do you do that? You're just so fucking nice. And it's like, whoa, jeez. <laughs> had said that was pretty interesting you were you were saying like what you're seeing in the chiptune scene now is what you saw in the punk scene like 10 years ago mm-hmm. what, what does that mean i don't know when i like made the shift but you know like there was a time 
and, and you know, I, I'll hold myself accountable and call myself out. But there was a time when these issues about like gender and trans rights and stuff like that, when it started to become part of like the actual discussion. Uh, where you couldn't ign ignore it. It was there. People were, social media brought it to light. Uh, here in Gainesville, of course, there's Against Me. Uh, their their, their yeah, singer came so. out as trans uh, oh, okay. uh, halfway through their career. And yeah, it was a big deal, especially if you lived in Gainesville and you liked the band and stuff like that. But it was also around the same time when that, that stuff sort of started happening. I, I started seeing like people making calls on social media and I started seeing flyers. We had like a little independent volunteer run record store that was near us uh there's like volunteer bookstores that used to be downtown and stuff like that so we'd see flyers and stuff flyers that would call for like diverse lineups oh, like cool. don't book a show unless you have one lgbtqia person on there oh, or shit. unless you have a person of color who's playing the show like people were like making those calls and then at the same time you also saw the folks that got strangely uncomfortable when those calls started to happen and i think just it was around that time that i i shifted as well you know it's like once i saw i think a friend walked up to me i forget what i had said at one point so i can't even remember what had happened but some people were feeling pretty uncomfortable about a flyer i think i remember what it was it was a flyer that said die cis scum and i think it was for a, a bookstore event and somebody, it was, it was this girl that I volunteered with at the record store, looked at it and was like, does this offend you? And she's like, because it offends me because I'm cis and, you know, I just don't think that she's doing it. I, I remember saying something like, well, I'm cis and it doesn't bother me. <laughs> and, <clears throat> and that was kind of like when I realized that there is like this, there's this like certain group of people that like, they feel threatened yeah. when they see shit like that. And, uh, that that's kind of like around the time when I guess I let go of it myself too, you know, like, it's like, I, it doesn't threaten me. I'm a white cis hetero dude. Like I can get jobs and I can just do whatever the fuck, you know, right. and, and people don't understand what kind of privilege they have. Right. You know? right. They don't. I remember when I met my grind singer, I was in my pop punk band and we were playing a ska show. And weirdly enough, the ska kids in this town booked a new grindcore band to open the show. Right. So I went there and I had kind of like a little bit of a history with grindcore. So like I knew these kids, but they just kind of only knew me as like the ska guy that plays in punk bands or whatever for some reason. But they played and I remember the singer of the band in the middle of the set goes, what the fuck is gender anyway? Fuck that shit. Don't it doesn't fucking exist. Fuck that shit. And I, I, I had just read uh, refusing to be a man, a Stoltenberg, a book by this dude Stoltenberg that had like a lot of cool stuff. I read the book from a song idea that a song I heard, but I kind of understood it. I got the point. But I remember driving home that day with my band and my whole band being upset about it. My whole band just being like, what did she even mean? Did you hear that? Like, what did she even mean? And I'm like, well, actually, I mean, it's just, you know, it, it makes sense, you know, it, it, and like I tried to explain it. Uh, your band, your band got upset? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Oh, yeah. Just because it was just confusing for them. And this is like eight years ago, nine years ago, yeah. you know? But yeah, like it, it was just, just, just uncomfortable dudes in an uncomfortable white dude pop punk band. You know, they were just like, eh, and I was just like, come on guys. But that day I went home and I wrote that singer. I was like, you guys are awesome. Your band's great. A week later, their guitarist quit. And I immediately messaged them again and was like, please let me be in your band. No and, way. Yeah. And they were like, don't you just play ska? And I'm like, you have no idea. What <laughs> you have no idea. And then we started a band and we went on for like six, seven, eight years. And it was the best time of my life. Aww. And we had to do the most touring I've ever done. And it's grindcore. So it's it's funny. You tour like all these places, but your set's 10 minutes. Yeah. And you play, and you play 11 songs in 10 minutes. And uh, it was just chaos. Every show was insane and fun and great. And so did you leave the pop punk band? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. So the, one of the main guys that took issue with that wound up being kind of like, a, a, he kind of ended up having some mental health issues. Oh, no. And uh, Yeah, and we ended up having to kind of like part ways just because it was becoming too much of an issue. <laughs> but it then just to be even more clear, like honestly, like ever since like 2016 too, like 
people that I like, I know people that voted for Trump right. that that at the time, you know, were, they're not my friends anymore, even if they regret their decision. You know, it's it, it just kind of like like I, I got to see who who's real, you know, right. like and it took and it took like I would I would even give people a chance probably like a year into it, maybe, you know, and I'd be like, oh, it's cool. Like maybe you saw the error of your ways. But once people once fucking George Floyd happened and all that yeah. shit and shit it's started like, going can, down. Right. And, People are dying at fucking protests and 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 Nazis are like right. provoking riots and I'm done. Like right. I don't care if you think you're okay or whatever. Like right. you, you know, that's it. I'm done. Like that kind of sucks. So you said that uh we were talking about how 10 years ago you had seen the same thing that was going yeah. on in the Chipton community now. So how now that it's been two, 10 years what happened and what do you expect to happen with the chiptune community oh man it's it's already changed for the better you know i i I, again i i shouldn't even be the one that gets asked this question personally because i am just another white dude making fucking music you know and there's so fucking many of us who fucking wants to hear from us (laughs) nobody fuck us uh but it's fucking beautiful man and and, and, you know i feel bad for the people who are being harassed right now that that speak up and do shit um because i know there are some people i see that that's how i wound up following certain people because i started seeing screenshots of people kind of going at people on social media calling out fucking bullshit but i love that it's happening and it makes me so happy and as soon as i saw that community on social media doing that i was like these are my fucking people i don't care like i even if i just float outside the twitter <laughs> i'm just like you're cool uh i want to be there for all of it um and i fucking love it <clears throat> and i think that's all i can say about it it's yeah. fucking great you know i love these shows that i've played too like it's just the fucking the, the all the fucking groups that I've already been associated with. And it's fun too, to play. I think I played maybe about four shows online. Oh you know? shit. You're moving think, fast. Damn. I think three or four. I can't remember. I can't, I can't remember. Um, one, two, three. I did, I did a couple locals. That's why I think I did. Oh, cool. I did one or two. I can't remember. But anyways, the shows that I played and the shows that I've just tuned in for that I haven't played. Like I keep seeing the familiar faces of the people that I've played with and it's just it's great it's like it's like going to a real show uh and i love it uh i've been having a real fun time i almost don't want it to go away but <laughs> it will hopefully soon and we can all get back out there but yeah no I, anytime i see some shit like that that's that's my shit and i and that's also too like if, if motherfuckers are listening to this and you see me do some shit call me on my shit I'll hell yeah it. i love call actually, me on my i love being shit. called out i love being i love it out. too yeah a couple folks like a couple folks uh in in the chiptune community and in the video game community and the pixel art community i've seen a couple folks already on twitter be like yo at, they'll at me and they'll be like i see you follow this motherfucker and i'll be like not no more <laughs> you know if i go check it out and i'm like that's all you gotta do you know, oh and I, I'm right there. See, like, thank you, because I don't fucking know. Like, <laughs> right. people, people come and follow me. A pixel artist wants to follow me. Cool. That's sick. Yeah. I might want you to do some art. And then they wind up being a Nazi. Please tell me. Dude. I, I want to fucking get rid of that fucker. Oh, my God. There was, like, some morning I woke up. Yeah. So, like, you know, I'm on social media. I'm trying to grow my band or whatever. Somebody follows me. I follow them back. Mm-hmm. It's cool. Whatever. Especially if I see like chiptune and their thing, I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. chiptune, sure, I follow you, you follow me. So like it was some it was some morning, and like I woke up to uh, Geek Beat Radio. Rob, he like hits me up. He's like, I-, I see you follow this dude, unfollow him, and I'm like, I'm just like in a haze because I just woke up. I'm like, I'm going back to bed. So then I like wake up for real. I'm like, what was that? Is this real? Like, what is this? Mm-hmm. So I like look up this dude. And he's like a chiptune artist. Same shit. Was it the like, a dude from Austin? It was the dude from Austin. It was like that guy's this, fun. Oh my god! Yeah, it was the dude from fucking Austin. It's so, funny. What, I message. I message. I don't fucking know. I just fucking somebody found him on Insta. I, I, I and I, as soon as apparently he's only on Instagram. I don't think he's on Twitter. But uh, I'm not really on Instagram, anyways. I am, but not for that. But whatever. Uh, anyways, dude 
I don't know. I guess he just posted some dumb shit. Somebody pointed it out, and that's it. And I did like, message. Wrote... I messaged some people out there though, and I was like, "Yo, no know this motherfucker." <laughs> I, oh, I think I think what happened too was I think I think he was farming follows and likes by using MAGA shit and, right. uh, and and using Proud Boy shit. Right. So I think a lot of people were like, "He's probably not even like that. He's just trying to get likes and follows." Which is such a fucking toxic way. Oh, to fucking, I know. Like, it just doesn't make sense. None of this makes sense, really, right. if you think about it. The whole fucking world right now. I kind of like, I, I won't, but like, I kind of wanted to interview that dude and be like, because it's interesting because like, there's no money in chiptune. Like, there's no money in chiptune. So it's interesting that he would do that, like Candace Owens, like Dave Rubin thing where it's like to, to monetize your opinion through chiptune. And it's like, dude, like, were you that desperate? Like, monetize? And, and, and we're not going to let that happen. Right. You know? Right. I think I said to somebody on, on Twitter the other day, I was like, he's not going to ever tour. Like, he's not going to ever fucking tour. I've been, a fill, I've been in, like, situations with, like, band members of mine, like, and there's been, like, abusers on tour in bands. And, like, not me personally, but people who I've been affiliated with have called the venues that they were on tour no to way. go to, like called all their fucking venues and got that fucking whole tour fucking canceled because somebody was a fucking abuser. Right. And if a fucking little like Nazi boy wants to come and do a chip tune fucking show outside of fucking Austin, don't fucking come to the fucking Southeast kid. Like right. it's not going to work. Like, <laughs> I don't know who the fuck you're going to hit the fuck up for I that know. shit. <laughs> and no, on it, I, I don't think you should fucking interview him. But I no, think no, I, we, I we should talk about him. Yeah, you know. But no, <laughs> don't. And you know what? We didn't even say his fucking name. And let's we keep didn't it even that say way. His name. The fucking Austin kid. There, That's not his name. <laughs> there is this person. I don't know. I like bounce back and forth on this. Like, like there is this person who I want to ask questions to. Um, it's like this drag queen from Utah and her name is uh, Lady Maga. Mm -hmm. And like, so she's like a drag queen and she's like, that was oh. the one that you posted about the other day. You yeah. Said no, no. Oh, no, no, no. That was uh that was a different dude. He that was, was a, like, that was a dude in Massachusetts. That was a dude in Massachusetts. Who's like a sitting, uh, health official for, for a town called, um, Abbotsville. Um, uh, uh -huh. and yeah. And Trump appointed him for Trump pride and i just wanted to like i just wanted to be like you're gay i'm gay like what's up like what's going on like where are you coming from i want to know i'd be respectful but not agreeable you know uh -huh. like like what's going on here i don't know uh-huh uh, I, I, that that when i read that i was like that's a good that's a good try hard podcast yeah if you could if you could have nailed that and then i thought i just kept thinking about it i was like why did that person say, why did that person not even respond to that? Like, cause I don't imagine them having like, what do they live in a mansion? Like, are they, like, are, are they, they? He's like a kid. He's younger than me. Is it money? I it, don't know. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll, every, if you, and also if you think about it, like the Trump administration, like everything, like why are they letting all these people die? Like right. why aren't they just doing things to make them live? And, and why would you make all of this trouble for yourself? And I, the one thing I can't figure out with everything here in Florida, like why our governor won't just six fucking weeks, it's fucking gone. Right. Oh, you know, just fucking do it. Like, what is, what are they making out of this? What are they getting? I don't, right. you, it can't be. You, you can't, who, like, I just don't know. Like, it, it, every person that dies in your state, do you get like a, a million Bitcoin? I don't fucking know. Like, what <laughs> happens? Like, why is this happening? Right. Does it make sense? I don't see how this could line their pockets any, if at all. It, it's it's so bizarre. It's so bizarre. Um, <laughs>
my town just had, uh, I'm not going to say any business names or anything, but my town just had a block party. Uh, and, and it was supposedly socially distanced or whatever, and it was hosted by local bar and business owners and restaurateurs and such. And they opened up, uh, they, they kind of took this, the whole main block and they, they blocked the traffic so they could put chairs and tables out and separate them or whatever. But I just think to myself, like, I, I'm not going, I'm, even though bars are open, I'm not going to a fucking bar. I'm not going to a fucking, I miss Mexican restaurants. Right. I was just saying the other day, like I want to go to a place where you get the salsa. Sure, and they hell keep yeah. It up, and you just sit there and you just eat it and somebody oh, yeah. really stirred it with their arm. It doesn't <laughs> matter. Like, I want that again. And I, apparently I can have it, but I don't, like, well, I'm not going out. Yeah. I'm a risk. I'm autoimmune. Like, yeah. I, if I get that shit, I'm probably screwed. But yeah, uh, people are going out. I'm seeing pictures of friends, you know, or mutuals, not really friends, like going out, hanging out in close proximity with one another, you know, going on to restaurants. Like, I haven't been to a restaurant in, since March. Oh, I know. All of our movie theaters are probably closed for good in Gainesville. I think they are. Um, but, I mean, none of that stuff's open. Even when it opened, because we were 100% open, nothing came back. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, it's just freaking bizarre can you like think like the people that are going out like that could you like not rationalize it but could you like figure out why why they're doing that like what is the thinking behind that i had a, a couple moments where like i felt like i almost slipped you know i didn't but there were a couple times where i was like my favorite restaurants up the road you know it's right. this awesome thai place it's great you should come if you ever visit i'll take you <laughs> great they have a curry crab rangoon uh it's really good and i i i ordered it to go that day of course but uh i was just thinking i was like i woke up one day i was like let's just go to chopsticks and then my wife was like yeah and then i was like wait it's covid yeah that you know so there are moments like that but i i think that i could tie like for the people who i see who do it i mean it, it it's got to be alcoholism, you know, it's got to be just, really? you know, you need to get out and you, yeah, because I mean, I, I know that life, you know, there was a time when I was out at the bar every fucking night watching every fucking band, everybody knew my face, some venues would let me in for free, I think I worked at a venue for years here in town, oh, damn. yeah, you know, the Fasting Gainesville, like I worked there, you know, but I, uh, a lot of drinking early on yeah. in that time of my life, and then I stepped back from it, so it's like, I don't do that anymore. But then I also see folks who are my age who were there with me when I was there and they're still there and they're still at the bars every night and they're still doing the shit. And those are some of the people, not all of them. A lot of them are staying home and doing the right thing. And they're just drinking at home if they got to do it every day. Yeah. But some of them are going out and doing it and, and partying and hanging out with folks. And I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't even begin to tell you. I also think that as bizarre as it is, I think the government's doing a good job of making it Act, acting like it just went away, you know, especially in Florida. It's so true. Uh, Florida is definitely just like, what are you talking about? Like, even in Gainesville, a place that's doing a really good job wearing masks, even with the restaurants and the places still social distancing, like I myself personally, and I probably, and I, yeah, just about everyone who I know has probably had a situation where they've been in a place where somebody refused to wear a mask and they witnessed some type of thing happen. Like those videos where the guys right. are like, you're a great mask constitution, yeah. right? Like that's a lot of Florida. Um, it, it, all over really. As a matter of fact, there's a pizza place in Northwest Gainesville that had, I think they actually had to close because in that part of Gainesville, they were having altercations with people who wanted to eat who wanted to come in without masks wow. and it was becoming a danger for them to like keep the restaurant open because people were being so shitty about it. So right. they had to like take some steps. I haven't looked too much into it. We lost a lot of restaurants though. We lost oh, a lot sure. of restaurants. We lost a lot of bars, uh, a lot of private business, which is all this town is, um, you know, it's why I also can't get too hard on, you know, local businesses trying to do like an outdoor thing and probably doing their best to make sure people are safe. Right. But at the same time, too, they shouldn't be open. They shouldn't have been open when they opened up. It wasn't done yet. Right. Um, and they should have been, you know, not to shame the business owners. They should have been being helped by the government. Uh, yeah, it's it's quite the mess. <laughs> you were saying like 
at your job uh, before you resigned, like there was this hoax mentality up here, like in New England, where I am, it was kind of like, is this happening for real? But nobody was ever like, this is a hoax. This is like fake. Oh, man. I'll try to be careful about the things that I say here because I, I the state, man, I worked for it. <laughs> so I could just sit here and trash it all day. <laughs> but I'll probably wind up going back and working for them because they, <laughs> they, 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 they're, they're cool jobs, man. Yeah. Like, I mean, you're a park ranger or you're just working in forestry. Like what my last job that I did for the year was I was a wildfire emergency dispatcher. That sounds so and, cool. Yeah. And I got the job because I had experience on prescribed fire and I knew a thing or two about it and I'd already have the certifications to do it. So that gave me and, and I had radio experience. So that gave me the opportunity to get this job. So, yeah, directing flight traffic, uh, <clears throat> calling up helicopters having them take off in one town to go view a potential wildfire in a spot that's inaccessible to local fire department doing things like that checking in on the flight checking in every 10 minutes with those uh pilots and such uh things like that it was very serious it was very cool but that particular agency there's biologists and there's scientists and there's there's smart folks and there's they're, and they're good people you know but let's just say i'm really glad that i got out when i did because there's also the thing it's like you work for the government so you can't wear your fucking trump heart on your fucking sleeve all right, right. and i'm sure that a lot of people there i don't know who they voted for or who they wanted to vote for but I kind of know who they voted for and who right. they voted for. <laughs> but they don't really talk about it because you're not supposed to. You'll get in trouble. So there was that. But, you know, you kind of always have that feeling that somebody, I mean, of course, that I've heard employees say racist things, you know, like I've heard them say stuff. And and, and in some cases, it was because that's, that's just, that's, this is Florida, man. Like there's places in Florida that are so scary. <laughs> I don't know how else to tell you. Like where you go in there and you're like, we have got to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, I am telling you like, and, 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 and the, the South gets really Southern in some places. So yeah, there were a couple dudes that, you know, they'd, they'd say some shit, you know, but I remember right when it started, I, I was I was taking precautions about two weeks, probably about the, the beginning of March. And and part, I was wearing a mask and, and I did know that COVID was happening, but I knew that it wasn't a big deal yet. I think they only had like 700 cases. In right, the US at that time. right. Um, <clears throat> but I was having breathing problems and I was seeing it on the news. So I started to get paranoid. So I started to wear a mask because anything that irritates it, Windex irritates it, weed irritates it. You know, uh, and it gets bad. If I get my meds, I'm fine. It goes right. away. Um, <clears throat> but I couldn't get my meds. And so I was wearing a mask. And right before the 15th of March, or like right before it got kind of like whatever, I, I, I had, I was feeling real sick. Um, and I called in. And it was about March 15th that I called in. And it was because of my lung. There was this one biologist who didn't work for our agency, but he worked for FWC. And he always stopped by and said hi to me. He's probably retired now, but he would always come and talk to me. And he walked up one day and goes, where's Gary? And they go, Gary's at home sick. And he's smart. So he knows what's going on in the world. So he's just like, Gary's sick. How sick is he? What does he have? Does he have a fever? Tell me what he has. And he goes into my boss's office and he goes, Could, I almost said her name. <laughs> and he goes into my boss's office and he goes, where's Gary? How sick is Gary? And my boss is like, where are you? The way he described it was like, what are you stressing out about, Bubba? Come on now. And he's like, he, does, does he have COVID? There's a terrible virus. And he goes, ain't nothing but the flu. And he goes, do you wear a seatbelt when you drive a car? And she goes, huh? And, and I guess she goes, hey, listen, good Lord going to take you when the good Lord takes you. And then he said he just stormed off. And that was my boss that he was talking to. So he goes down to his office and he calls me and he goes, what's up? What, what, what's the deal? Are, are you dying? Do you have COVID? And I'm like, no, nah, I'm renovating my house and I breathe in insta insulation and I have a bad lung. Yeah. And that's why I'm here. And he goes, oh, my God, I was freaking out. Then he told me the story about my boss. But that was the vibe. Um, and I remember when I was wearing a mask, uh, I wore a mask every day. Early on, I did. Um, the Rangers would walk through and just go, like, look at this guy here. Like, all the time. Every time. I mean, I didn't care. I'm going to live. That's yeah. all. My, in my mind, I'm like, whatever, guys. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, man, um, it was kind of a, you know, to my knowledge, it was a very Trumpian place. Um, and everyone just kind of kept that shit to themselves because I think what happened was the 2016 election happened. And I think a couple of people did kind of get 
I don't think anybody got like into any like physical stuff or anything, but I think people antagonized people so much at the last election that a couple of people had to take some time off yeah. and, and get away from the place. And then I think they kind of had a meeting after 2016 and they were like, y'all got to cut that shit out. Wow. Like it doesn't matter who you're going to vote for. You can't come into work and be harassing people because they don't vote for the candidate that you like. And I think some shit happened like that. Um, Another thing about these Southerners, I might get in trouble for saying this, but I don't give a fuck. Sometimes it's like real Southern people, like <laughs> right? People like people kind of talk like that, mount out like those, and because they're down here, they're for real. And like when you're, a, and I'm from Massachusetts, so I have this like this mix. Like I got the Florida, and, and and my dad's from Maryland. So and when I go up there, if I'm ever up there, you don't have an accent, but mine might come back. Uh, <clears throat> my my uh, my drummer's from Rhode Island, and sometimes when he and I get together, it's it comes back. Oh no no no! Oh man! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! It comes back. Uh, uh, thank God you don't have a thick one because it would come back now. But only when like, I'm mad. Only when I'm mad, I'll be. <laughs> that's in me too. When yeah, I'm yeah. mad too, I, same thing comes out, and people go, "Where are you from?" And it's just like I'm from Boston, damn it, you know. And it's like I'm mad. Uh, but anyways. Uh, Oh my so God. I kind of have this like, I don't know what I sound like. Maybe I have a Southern drawl, but I, I, I think it's kind of like a normal just talk. Yeah. Some of them hear that and they just think you're like making fun of them. No way. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Like I've, I've, I worked at a, a glass place once installing glass and I had said something to somebody and he was like, hey man, hey, I mean, that, 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 that. and I was like, yeah, man, no problem, anytime. He was like, you get the hell out of here right now, boy. Like. <laughs> And I remember going like, what just happened? And the, my coworker was like, he is so dumb and so South and rednecky and stupid as shit that when you just talk to him normal and say like, you're please and thank you, like he thinks you're fucking with him. And and that I had to like learn that, you know, and, and get past shit like that. Do you have to like compensate for that now that you know about it? Like, no, well, that's in it. Well, not in my job. My job. Oh, okay. If you ain't quick on the draw and you come up to my desk, you know, and you're and yeah. you're like, oh, hey, gear man, have a day to do And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, come on, man. Like, we're working in an office. Like, yeah, you know, <laughs> like, right. That's kind of like the thing. I, I kind of got it was it was a really cool job. I really liked it. I, I got I ended up doing a lot of stuff on Excel and like doing a lot of data entry and uh, keeping track of like the fleet of vehicles and stuff. It wasn't really in my job description and it wasn't really my pay grade, but it was sure a hell of a lot better than answering those dang phones all right. day. So I was doing some like stuff that other people were like, that is daunting. And I'm like, what numbers and computers? No. <laughs> this isn't daunting. I'm not bored. Yeah, man. It, it's it's weird. It's it's the South, you know. And another thing too is that this place was in Gainesville, but everybody who worked there that was like of that type that I speak of, they didn't live in Gainesville. They oh, lived like okay. the outside town. Oh. The people that lived in Gainesville were like the biologists and yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, the 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 media liaison and like all the folks that do all the uh, the stuff with the general public. Oh damn! <laughs> I love that story about your boss because it like reminds me of like all you know they'll go on tv and they'll like interview the trumpers and they'll be like well like what do you think about covid is it real and they'll be like oh you know by this point i won't pretend to do the southern accent you do it much better than i do but but uh, uh they freaking live here yeah. man it's so bad when you see them on tv and they're like baby jesus came to me yeah. and told me that he is gonna end the satanists on the democratic party they're drinking the adrenochrome and that shit's real yeah and that shit's real and they're here and they're fucking here man they're not in my town but they're like right up the road they're here mm -hmm. they're right uh, up the road. and like that thinking is so interesting like what your boss said like good oh, lord gonna take you when he takes you and they're on tv too they're like well yes like i have experienced covid and i do have family members that have died but i'm still just gonna do this anyway because you know god's gonna take me when they're gonna take me and like, I don't need to wear a mask. And it's like, what? They all, there was a point though, where even the people who believed it to be a hoax, and even when it started, there was a point where the office called everyone and they didn't call me in. They knew I was like masked up with gloves and shit. Yeah. But they called everyone in and they're like, we don't care what you think. You really? need to wipe this fucking office down and you need to wear masks and you need to do this and you need to do that. Work from home. Boom, boom, boom. And there was a moment where even those 
And I'll even say, even for the people who probably call it a hoax to this day, there was a moment where I think everybody was like, oh shit, it's real. Wow. And I think it was because the president did say it was real at one point. At one point, he had to start doing the yeah. stupid meetings. Yeah. The pillow guy. Oh, the my pillow guy. <sighs> Everything that was a great so day. Insane. That was a great day. It's, fun. it's like sometimes, like, I sit, it's like an acid trip. It's like it, it, it just went on for like, it was one net day, but it, it, it felt like four years. Oh, I know. And then, like you get done with it and you're at the end. Hopefully we're at the end. And you think of like, do you remember when that crazy fucking thing happened? No, I don't. Because it's every fucking day. Right. I'm sorry, I'm cussing too much. Lose your calf. No, no. This is the perfect representation of Super Veg. So mm -hmm. it'll be, you know. Oh, well, that's very nice of you to say. <laughs> so what was like, when people started to realize that it was real, how did they move forward without being like, oh shit, I was wrong? Describing like a Florida Forest Service, which is like a firefighting agency that has yeah. like some elements of um, environmental protection and stuff like that. It's also falls under the Department of Agriculture because we do timber and forestry. Yeah, so like fact, you know, like Smokey the Bear, um, I, I'm not too sure entirely about the National Forest Service, although I do think this is true. The Florida Forest Service primarily and Smokey the Bear, that, that their main thing was like timber and logging. So they would grow these pine plantations, which they're like native Florida pines and such, but and, and they have to maintain the land and then they keep the cycle of trees going. Um, <clears throat> but it's kind of like they're kind of like cops and, and they are, they actually do have a law enforcement side to them as well. But when I say they're like cops, I mean like they almost like, Oh boy, I might get in trouble for this. If they take care of each other. Uh -huh. So like where cops are doing like really, really bad things and then covering their asses on it, other agencies do the same shit. And that was kind of like the vibe there. So everyone kind of like looked out for each other and, and you know, it, it's a lot easier to find your peace doing that when what you're doing is somewhat fulfilling to the greater good of what's going on. You know, I yeah. mean, of course it's government, so there's bureaucracy and dumb shit going on, but I mean, we're growing trees and we're reintroducing woodpeckers to pines, you know, like we're doing like cool shit. Yeah. Uh, and so like, you can, you can look past some of that dumb shit when you see the other people who are in that agency who are doing good things. And that is the case with a lot of these agencies. They say, sir, like I say, sir, to all my supervisors, even yeah. if I don't fucking respect them. I yeah. had pictures of my boss sleeping in her office, <laughs> saved on my one drive. No, no. She'd sleep in her office from where I was. I never, ever use them ever. But I would take them just like, oh, she's got another one for the old, uh, the old archive. Um, <clears throat> just shit like that. But anyways, uh, they took it seriously because they had to. And it, and it was an order. It was an order from the chief, you know, like uh, the, the commissioner, if you will. Uh, and, and when it comes down like that, that's how it comes down. And I think they even got a little side order too. That was like, and don't go off on your social media talking shit about how you think it's a hoax. You keep wow. that shit to yourself when you're at, cause that's the other thing too, is that like you put your job on your social media, you work for a state agency, you go out, you talk some shit, you do some dumb shit. Now right. you're doing conduct unbecoming of a state agency. You're out buddy. Right, right. And that's the thing that they'll do to you. Like lickety split. Uh, they'll get people to sign papers and say you did stuff you might not have done if they really want to get rid of you really? but you really got to cause trouble yeah. you know what i'm saying like and and, and you know I, i've heard of stories of people getting booted out of agencies unjustly but then i also heard stories that those cats were causing trouble so right 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 you know i was never causing trouble they loved me you know i just yeah. got sick and yeah. i got sick because they started taking it seriously they started right. coming in there every day and they had to do this this is what you have to do you have to wipe everything down with the lysol wipes and you got to use all the antibacterial crap everywhere you got to spray everything down and that was the stuff that was messing me up. I didn't even get it. And I knew that that stuff messed me up, but right. I was wearing a mask and I was like gloving and, and, and doing things. Cause if I got sick, I, I would get really sick. And I go home feeling sicker every day. Wow. And I'd wake up in the morning feeling a little bit better. And then I go back into work. I got all the way up to where I resigned and still hadn't put two and two together and was just like, oh, they're walking through with aerosols, just spraying it, like spraying it in the air, wiping down all the surfaces. And they were, they were like, Psh, almost excessively and dumb. Damn. But at the same time too, that, that was what was really doing it. Um, uh, and it did, it took a couple months to get back better, you know? That's crazy. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. But your governor, so you, you've got like the state agency that's saying one thing, and I feel like your governor, DeSantis, I, I believe is his name, 
is uh you know giving opposite vibes is he not like how does that yeah, totally opposite vibes yeah um i don't i just like i said it's just it's so weird i don't know why i don't know like it, it, i can't even use like occam's razor on this like i have no idea how to is that the correct term like i don't know i've never heard that one it sounds cool though i think it's, a, it's like a, i think it's a philosophy i think it means that like when you don't know why something happens so oh. you just automatically assume it's the most reasonable explanation for why something crazy and weird is happening <laughs> uh and i can't even like find that like thing you know yeah. i can't i can't even think of what that what why it's going on like everyone's like what does trump have on him i don't know maybe nothing who like what do we we don't know anything we just know that you know, we do know that closing down everything tanks the stock market, and we know that Republicans lose elections when the stock market's not moving. right. Right. So, I mean, maybe that has something to do with it, but it's all gonna get closed down again. You know, it's all it's it's still bad. People are still friggin' dying. What do you think's gonna happen when like who knows if anything happens? Like, it's 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 not like fixing anything. I right. don't know what the deal is, though, but it is the opposite message. He's going and he's saying that it's it's fine. It's done, that the right. deaths are low, that the the numbers are this, the numbers are that. Um, I think if you if you Googled Florida COVID right now, one of the top Tampa Tribune and Miami Herald stories will probably be something about how the governor hid COVID tests. Yeah. There's a story right now about a guy who worked for I think he worked for the Clinton campaign. He worked for a big campaign. He was some kind of activist, well known in the community. He, his fam, his family was told by the hospital that he died of a heart attack, and they later found out he died of COVID. Like this oh, is a news shit. story today, and so they're, it's like it's a news story now. It like got hidden from them, oh, and shit. I guess they're kind of politically tied, so they're trying to like make a big deal out of it. And but it's like if that's happening on that level, it's happening everywhere. Yeah, you know? um, yeah, it's just. It's crazy. I, I, I don't even know, you know, what to think or what to do with it, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think would have happened? Because um, it was kind of close, wasn't it, between uh, Gillum and DeSantis? Was it close? Or maybe, maybe it was not. very close. Yeah, it was, it was close. very close. It was very close. And everyone was so sad. And it's like, these elections just suck. But I have to yeah. like find a way to like, just know that like the worst possible thing could possibly happen and when right. it happens just don't don't, don't be self-destructive to right. yourself you know right. don't like try, try to try to just go on with your life yeah. but um when that happened everybody was really um upset that gillum lost and desantis won by 0.4 percent wow like and and, and uh, leading up to announcing the winner and i do believe that gillum uh conceded early and was oh, like, he? yeah, he got it, you know, but then the votes kept coming in and places no, still no, hadn't no. counted yet. So no. then Gillum was like, OK, well, we have to wait until it's done. Yeah. Santos is already declaring victory. But I know that short time between when voting day and when they finally figured out it was DeSantis, DeSantis was not having a good time. Why? Uh, and huh? Why? Because it was being, it was close. Oh, because of the recount. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. No, yeah, it yeah. was close. Yeah, yeah, it was close. Like you could tell that he was just like, damn it. Like he was like, yeah. what the heck I won? You know, like he, he had that, like the, the he, he caught it. He was yeah. like, and, and that whole time. And, and also we had such a huge turnout it, and it was, I told you it was 60% and it was 62% of registered people who were old enough to vote or able to vote. 62% of them voted in that election. As of right now, tomorrow's voting day, 60% has voted already in right. early voting and mail-in ballots. So we've already met that number, which was considered a high turnout, and we still have tomorrow. Right. Um, that's If he won by 4.4% at that point, imagine what it's going to be like in Florida tomorrow. So we don't know. We'll just have to see. But anyways, um, yeah, he wasn't having a good time. But here's the cool thing. We passed awesome amendments and laws. Uh, we got greyhound racing banned from Florida. I read that. Which yeah, was so cool, and uh, it did. It worked, and uh, I, I lived with a greyhound at the time, so there was much Aww. cause for celebration. Uh, <laughs> and um, 
also what did we get we got it's currently being contested i'm sure you've heard about it right now but we got felons were able to vote again in florida but then when desantis became the governor he did a bunch of stuff to eh, meddle with that so he made it so they have to pay off any existing court fees after they're out of jail before they can oh, vote oh yeah, yeah so yeah. like a poll tax so like when bloomberg came down here he just started paying them all off did he really yes he did wow he actually did i i mean maybe i should fact check that but i'm pretty dang sure that he sounds did. like that was bloomberg one of the things thing. that he did because yeah, it's yeah. The, and then everyone's like he's paying for votes it's like actually no he's just paying off their fines wow. they vote for whoever the hell they want wow it doesn't matter yeah yeah um but yeah he came down here and did that uh from what i understand and still fuck that guy too. Yeah, but, fuck uh, that guy. But that's yeah, interesting. Yeah, fuck that guy. But that did happen. But yes, yeah, so we got a couple of cool amendments like that passed. And I remember people being really upset and just being like, oh, Florida, whatever. And I'm like, but look at what we did. Yeah. Look at how angry DeSantis is right now. Just imagine if we did this like tenfold. Because it, it, the numbers, like there's more Democrats in Florida than there are Republicans. Really? Uh, uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty astronomical, actually. And I just think that it, it, and it's not even like people being like this. Disin- I mean, there are long voting. There are long lines in like Miami-Dade County and stuff like that. And it's terrible. Um, but that said, I mean, Obama wrapped that shit up. Yeah, he got it twice. He, he took it. Yeah. And then I feel like people were just like disenfranchised from voting. Like they didn't want to do it. Like they, they didn't feel like who they were voting for, like spoke to them. And then, so I guess a bunch of people just don't vote. Yeah. And 2016, a bunch of people didn't vote. And this is what happened. And now yeah. I think everyone's like, nope, I'm not going to happen again. Why didn't Gillum take it? I mean, I think Gillum's kind of a weird dude. I would have voted for Gillum. But Did you see all like, that shit to happen? He's a weird dude. Yeah. Uh, he's uh, fucking uh, weird. A whole bunch of stuff happened, like the meth and the, and the hotel room and stuff. I don't even know. I mean, um, like, yeah. I mean, yeah. And then like that, but even the, the even the, I mean, I wasn't, I, I would have voted for the dude no matter what. Like I what? didn't yeah. care. Like yeah. like that, that was my dude at the time. And he st- right. it still is he ran again, whatever. I mean, you got a lot of shit on your plate now. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thought he was awesome as hell. Um, <clears throat> but e- even with the shit, like where he like went to Hamilton with an FBI agent or some shit like that. Yeah. And, like I, on its face, man, what we're dealing with now, he went to a fucking concert. He spent like 300 fucking bucks. Like what? right who cares man like yeah. look at what's happening now like <laughs> it's like straight up crime like everywhere like, right corporate crime like crazy uh, insider trading people doing stock sell-offs <laughs> the new york real estate uh commercial real estate bubbles about to pop and everyone's <laughs> got their pensions tied up in it and crap like that like <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and oh, Andrew Gillen went to go see Hamilton. I know, true, 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 true. Yeah, yeah. I was, I actually, I was a little surprised that Gillum did not win, that they gave it to DeSantis, because DeSantis just seemed so like, like Gillum was weird, but DeSantis just seemed so low functioning. Like he did not seem like a competent person, and we're yeah, seeing man, that he's not. He was also he was the Trump candidate too. Like right, right, right. There right, were right, people right. who were running for it on the Republican side that weren't all in for Trump. Yeah, and uh, it's just because he went all in for Trump that he got oh, really? the, he, he won that primary. And wow. uh, yeah, he had like a commercial where he was like having his little baby that was just born build a wall. I remember I saw that. Uh, and yeah and and, and and terrible <laughs> there was a moment dude where i almost felt like I, I i was gonna be sort of content with him just being in tallahassee i mean i knew i wasn't going to be there were some things uh, obviously that i don't agree with him policy wise but he was doing environmental stuff he was actually putting some money into some things he was acknowledging climate change unlike rick scott who like banned agencies from saying it yeah uh and or attempted to rather. Um, <clears throat> but there were some things happening that I was like, well, it's not Rick Scott. And that's actually, good. he put FWC officers back in state parks. Wow. Rick Scott had completely removed them. So if you were a park ranger in a state park and you caught somebody poaching a turtle, you don't have, you don't have a gun. You didn't, what are you, you going to do? And like, Hey, stay there while I call yeah. someone to drive 17 miles into the forest. Right. You know, but he put those officers back in there, which is like a very important thing. Dumb shit like that. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this might not be so bad. And then COVID happened. 
Yeah. And then it was just like, whoa, like the thing where he puts the mask on like backwards. Did you see that? It was just like, no, I missed that one. And he puts it, it's like, so, oh, it's great. It's it. Oh my God. That was right at the beginning. And that's when everyone's like, we're fucking screwed. We're screwed. <laughs> Look at this guy. Like, yeah. <clears throat> oh my God. Oh man. I, I, but I just thought, again, I think Andrew Gillum lost because not everybody voted. And I think not everybody voted because it was a midterm and people don't vote as much as they do in the general elections. Shit. Mm-hmm. I think they will now. Yeah. I think now. Oh, it's like for four years, there's just been somebody going, fuck you. You all suck. And everyone's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. We're going to show you who sucks. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully I don't eat my words. I know. That's what I'm scared. Like, I really feel like four years ago, so I was living in Providence at the time. And like, there was just doubt in the air because people did not, regular Joes, like Joe Rogans, you know, like, they did not they didn't like trump and they did not like hillary and like my you know like i felt it and i was and i guess those maybe are like the independent votes but now like there's no doubt like no man uh, they both sucked it was a really shitty election right um and and you know it 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 didn't but it doesn't matter it's like we're never gonna get a good election like we're always gonna have like the worst possible choices yeah um you know obviously bernie man like we're so lucky to have gotten like somebody who's actually gonna be for the worker yeah and and that's the other thing too about our our whole we need like a worker party like we actually do do. like we we need like a real honest to god uh a worker party um maybe we'll get it soon you know but him coming into the fray it, these last two elections it's 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 like the only glimmer of right. like possible good things happening you know yes. but at the same time too you know uh, we're probably going to get a lot more crappy uh presidents true, to come. I, true. I, I definitely imagine what, what is biden's gonna be 82 in 2020 i know yeah 82 years old That's i think when crazy. i'm like 50 i'm gonna be like crazy I'm going to be gone. My brain's going to be toast. I know it's no, going to be. No, it's no, already no, kind of no. toast as no, it is. No, no. I'm pretty. I, yeah. I, what, I, what I mean to say is that when I get up to 50 and I start like noticing that I'm doing like weird shit, I'm going to be like, yeah, of course, I'm 50. My, my, my fucking brain's toast. I'm not going to be like, listen here, Jack. No. I'll tell you a story. Actually, to be, be like, honest with you, like 2016 gave me really. Uh, one thing that was positive was like it gave me a really good perspective on like age because because it was Trump, Hillary and Bernie and, you know, politics aside, they were like all energized. Like they all had this energy that like I was like, I hope I have that energy when I'm their age. And it like, you know, it gets scary when you get to be like 30, you know, stuff like that. You're like, oh, shit, here we go. Like we're doing this. You know what I'm saying? Like rock and roll dude yeah just, rock it'll, and roll. It'll, it'll keep you young forever <laughs> true, true, true i swear i i stand by it <laughs> yeah uh just keep rocking out you know
what are you what are you gonna do now i mean so yeah what's happening now so you resigned and shit Ch- tune in man uh, yeah producing uh learning to engineer want reaching out to bands to potentially come and record with me trying to not reach out to bands that look like hate breed you know <laughs> like a bunch of dudes you know yeah uh I love like, that dude picture. Like, like, how are you gonna pose like that? Like, you see so many of. It's like every. You go to like a one. metal festival and you see like the band page paper and like you're looking through and it's like look at all. Yeah, and they all do that. Two of them have a beard. Yeah, and and it's one like guy has a tw- one guy has a twirly mustache for some fucking like, reason. Who told you to pose like that? <laughs> Anyway, and sorry, to this sorry. day, too, to this day, or when oh, you see them all like black jeans, black shirt. Oh, I know. All the band, yeah, they are band photos. But no, um, yeah, I'm like reaching out to bands and reaching out to artists. That's uh, rad. Like, I want to do like, you know, people that don't have money, you know? I, I don't want to do, like, because if somebody calls me up and they're like, hey, I see this for, because I did, I made a post the other, not too long ago, where I was like, I want to do some stuff for free. But like, if you call me up and like, you got like, you like your whole band has like good jobs and like, you all have like new cars. Right. You've been in this band for like, 10 years go to fucking pay somebody 25 fucking bucks an hour like, why are you fucking coming to me like but if you're True. like in your like early 20s and you just started this shitty band with like your friends and you're playing in a couple of places like i'll fucking record you like yeah. and i'll do my fucking goddamn damnedest to make it hell, sound yeah. Good, hell you know? yeah and you know that, that that's that's something that i'm doing i'm trying to do anyways um reaching out to people but other than that i'm just learning it so I'm just sitting here engineering crap all day. I sort of finished the second EP. The first EP is it just got mastered. Holy uh, shit. Yeah. That's just so got, cool. Yeah. Well, I need to learn how to do it. Uh, but I, I, I got somebody online to help me out with it. He just mastered it. Uh, I got it back. It sounds great. Uh, but now I got to message him again because I actually ran through a couple of old stereos and it was just blasting the speakers. So I think I got to oh, tweak okay. the mix a little bit. My mix is great. I love my mix, but I think I got to bring my lows down a little bit. Artwork's currently being worked on. I got this kid uh, who's just a kid. I, I think he's in Russia. I don't know, but I just found some kid who's like in high school and he just makes the sick stuff. Dude. And it's just so weird looking and odd. It reminds me of like the alien hominid kind of look, you know, you know, <laughs> you know that game? Like he does, everything looks goofy and like, and just kind of like, I'm a dumb kid. And I'm just like, I love this shit. Uh, <clears throat> so I've kind of been like giving him money and like, uh, I think- Oh I, shit, I think, good for you, Dan. Well, no, I think, and yeah, they've been giving it to his, like, I think it's his mom's PayPal or something. So oh, I think okay. he's been giving the money to his mom, which is okay. kind of adorable. Yeah. Uh, but I also don't know what the fuck he's doing with it. Who knows? Yeah, but yeah. He's, he's doing it and, and and he's a young kid and he's just being so, he's, he's excited about it and he keeps giving me stuff. Even if he gives me the completely wrong fucking thing, what he, he gives me all these assets. So it's like all these like little pieces of like sick pixelated crap. Oh, and I can no. just do whatever the hell I want with it. So, oh no. Um, yeah, but I'm hoping he 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 catch get captures the vision that I have for something. But I've seen some <laughs> stuff that he does, and it's he's pretty cool. So, I got this kid doing some pixel art. Um, get the master done. I'm gonna put it up on Spotify. I you love know, it. I don't know. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, just because that everyone's like, is it on Spotify? Is it on Spotify? And it's just so accessible that way. Right. And I want to tour. Uh, as soon as as soon as that record's done, the second as super fetch, tour yeah. super fetch. Oh shit. Big time. And I'm I, and I do. I want to talk about this on your on your show but yeah uh so the second ep is done kind of i pretty much wrote it i put one song on youtube i don't know if you saw did you see the video on youtube with the white background it's me and three other people playing a song no uh, i'll have to show it to you i'll send Dude. it to you i'll send it to you twitter later on uh it's actually it's me my wife and my buddy kevin who, who's been playing all the bass on the recordings anyways um and we're all kind of do the thing i actually gave it to dan butler for the last uh, show that we performed oh. at Wait, well, I watched that. I saw your set there, but there was no people in the There's background. another video on my YouTube. I'll send it oh, your okay, way. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But that's one of the songs that's new. And then I got two more that I just wrote, and then I kind of just wrote a really crazy heavy one, and I think I'm going to use it. I don't know. But I write all the music, and then I go and I do all the Game Boy. Yeah. I think that's kind of like my workflow now, because I can write all the melodies and all the really cool things on the guitar just real quick. And then, yeah. I, and then I just go in and I painstakingly do it on the Game Boy. <laughs> and I just try to go right along with it and get through the whole song. And then I can, it, conceptually, I can play a set 
with a Game Boy Live. Yeah. If, if I have to, I can't. I don't want to. And yeah. I know everyone's going to be like, I'm Dawless. Well, good for you. But whatever. I'll just rather go up there with my Ableton push and press a button and fucking go. And then it ain't going to fuck up or crash on me. But, um, <clears throat> But all that sound comes from the Game Boy. And I think that's very important. And I've heard people argue with me and be like, I can make my modular sense match a chip tune frequency. And, uh, <laughs> on the oscilloscope, I can match oh the God. back waveforms. And I'm like, yeah, but it's not a Game Boy. Dude. Right, right, right. You know, and you hear it like, I'm sorry, it sounds better. Oh um, my God. But the next one's done. So I'm just going to try to crank that out as fast as i can i'm thinking about three months it'll be on spotify and officially released cool at that point the other one should be working on mastered and mixing and then tour i want if if the world heals and gets normal again and if anybody out there is listening to this like if you're across the pond if you're in canada if you're in south america if you're anywhere if you're in japan and you want to come here i know there's a festival circuit in chiptune i have no idea how it works i've never been to a mag fest or any of the fests no never Dude. no oh my god but i'm 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 a fest person i i, I worked for fest for a long time oh so i've god. been to my fair share of wild ass music festivals oh my god um Magfest. I'm just gonna say. I'm just gonna say. Next Magfest, I cannot wait to meet you. Like Magfest is the best. Magfest. Can I is play it? Can I get in? If, Let me in. If I have any say, you are. I mean, I don't. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. well, it's that's the other thing. So that aside from that, it it it, it doesn't. It, it well, I will probably most definitely be going to a festival at some point. But what I want to stress is that I want to get into a van and just do that story that I recounted to you earlier. Just yeah. be in somewhere and being like, "Shit, I can't drive home right now." Is that gonna uh, be? Oh, sorry, sorry. Huh? What? Well, I was just gonna say, like, um, you know, something that I'm really envious about what you were saying is this is my experience and I believe it to be true about most people's experience, but I'm not, you know, I'm not absolute in it and I'm not certain in it, but it is not easy touring as like a chiptune band. Like I've tried to do house, like I've tried to get people to like book my group for house shows and like, you know, bars that aren't, you know, nerdy by nature. And there's just this wall there. And it's just like, I just feel like it's an extra challenge because like you're trying to explain this chiptune thing and like, that is my experience so i'm very interested hearing about like your experience booking and touring and and if that comes easier like touring as a chiptune act i think it's going to be easier yeah uh, i think i kind of I, I i do i have the punk thing going with it too so i can like just kind of just go right up to the punks and just hell yeah i'm coming and i'm playing like is it like in your doing network doing like you know <laughs> You know, I have a network. Yeah, yeah, I have a network. And even if I don't have a network, I can fucking I'll fucking get in there. I'll find the I'll find Shit. the fucking place. I'll, I'll figure it out. Yeah. You know, like we'll get to the place. But that's the other thing, too, is that like I know all these kids that have Game Boys and chill and do music all over that we see them all over the place on Twitter and everything. I know that yeah. they live in towns. I know they have coffee shops, you know, ain't nobody really got to go. You right. know what I mean? I'm just going to roll through there with a couple of shirts and a couple of records and play a guitar with a game. That sounds dope. And then you just do it with me. And, you know, if, un if unfortunately, if only your aunt and uncle come, that's great. Uh, I think they'll enjoy it. I love uh, that. Especially if they love you. So, I mean, you yeah. Know. Hell uh, yeah. But, but that, no, like, yeah, you know, venues. I think that, and that's the thing, as I was saying earlier, is that, like, when <laughs> – when the u.s gets better again if anybody wants to come over here and hit the road if there's a festival you want to go to plan it two weeks out yeah. drive from someplace to the festival and hit shows every night on the way you know it doesn't even have to be in florida i'll meet you in la we'll rent yeah. a van and we'll just yeah. go you know it just just do it um and you know if anybody wants to hit the road like uh that's uh something that i want um, everyone listening to this to know. Yeah. And if you're anywhere, if you if, and, and trade with me, come do two weeks with me. I'll go out there and do two weeks with you. You know, I want to leave the country. My passport's going to expire in a few years. I haven't done it yet. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so if you want to come over here and, and that's the other thing too, is that like, if I book a tour, like we're going to have a place to stay. Right. We're going to have, we're going to get, right. we're going to get gas money and we're going to sell merch. Right. Um, Another thing I would advise anybody if you're coming from overseas, 
mail your merch to me like a week before you get here so Hell that yeah. nobody asks you any questions <laughs> when you get off the plane or heck call me ahead of time i know people who do screen printing we'll get all your stuff printed here and then you don't even have to worry about it um you know what that's yeah. what we need to do like maybe this exists and i don't realize it but i would love to like have a you know thing for chiptune artists to be like we, me, Gary, this person from yeah. this place, that person from this place, we drew a map. And like, if you're a good person, hit us up. We'll just send you around this map. Yep. We'll host, I'll host you a show in Boston. Gary will yep. show you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, you're in Boston and Providence. Right. Right. How far is Connecticut? Ain't, that, ain't donut shoes in Connecticut? Donut He's shoes is in Connecticut. Set. He's donut probably shoes. got there something it is. to buy, right? Do you know yeah. anybody in Philly? uh you Storm know Hoover. yeah uh, yeah yeah uh, Cass is in new york right uh uh um you know there, there's there's people all over and i'm in florida but i got florida miami orlando tampa then you go up to atlanta then right. you can go right up to north north carolina is a far drive from my house as miami is so you could just go gainesville straight to north carolina and then when you're up to north carolina you're near all that crap right uh you could hit it you could do that you do richmond you do Columbus, South. I think Carolina? we got the East Coast pretty good covered. Columbus, East like. Coast is covered, but that said, I got Oakland, uh, and I got LA. Oh. Uh, yeah, I can book Oakland and LA. Are you serious? Um, yeah, it's where my grind band lives. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm hitting there. you up on that. And, uh, oh, I can do Philly. I can do Chicago. Oh, really? I can do. Philly. Oh, you do Chicago. Uh, and who Look else? Look at you, damn. I think I can get. I think I can get Cleveland. Uh. What, one more. Hold on. Wait. <laughs> There's one more. <laughs> uh, Columbus, Ohio. I can do Columbus, Ohio. Uh, and then I ain't been to Texas or New Orleans. Right, or, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know we can play in Austin. There's a couple of punk clubs and I know some punks there. No uh, way. Yeah, cool ones that are like down with like our kind of shit, you know? Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Dude, I'm going with you. 